Cool. So, hello and welcome to the NWC Show. This is episode 51. And if you would like to introduce yourself. Hi, yeah, thanks very much for having me on, man. Uh, my name's Jason Reed, uh, professional wrestler, uh, probably well more known for uh, working ICW. I'm excited to, to join you on uh, episode 51 and looking forward to a, a good chat about uh, some wrestling. <laughs> I know, thanks for coming on. It's, I've been watching your work for a little bit of time now. I've been a wee bit, wee bit jealous because your style is very similar to what I used to do. Um, and then when I've been watching it, I'm like, maybe I could go back and still, like, just hang a little bit, but no, I've no. So, question we always start with is, what got you into wrestling? What was that moment you were like, this is this is my jam. I want to do this. Um, yeah, I mean, it probably goes back um, all the way sort of to primary school for me, um, and I guess the answer is probably similar to a lot of the guys that you, you have on. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I watched it growing up from a very young age. Absolutely loved it, um, and more so kind of going through high school as well. I had a, a good mate which was, uh, he was a couple of years older than me, and he was really, really into it. He had all the old sort of WCW taped tapes in his loft from, from Monday Night Nitro. We used to watch those. Um, any pay-per-view that was on, and, and back in the day, it used to be on kind of Sky Sports, or, or I think it was Channel 5 at one point, so we used to get it free. So we used to go and, and, and watch it up at his. Um, and yeah, going through high school, I kind of, you know, my mates were, were, were similar. They kind of liked it as well. Um, funny story, we actually um, we, we decided to make our own wrestling ring in, in one of the boys' back gardens. Um, bit of a shambles, but it was, a, it was a good attempt. So one of our mates, his granddad actually ran a, a recycling sort of, I guess, like a tip. Um, and yeah, we used to go up there and like and, and sort of put everything in a wheelbarrow and take it back down to the garden. So we had like plywood, big chunks of post, ropes. We actually found turnbuckles and stuff. So we had kind of fixed the post onto a trampoline, had the ropes around it, and then the turnbuckle screwed in. It actually looked really good at the time. We thought it was amazing. Um, but I actually got sent a, a photo of it a few days ago or, or last week. And, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shambles. But, yeah, that, that was good. And, and then from there, kind of just I found a, a wrestling school that was just along the road for me. And, yeah, started training. And uh, the rest, as they say, is, is history. And it's it's really weird you saying that because I had the, pretty much the similar story. Me and my friend, we had a trampoline. We went and got like wood and stuff like that. Put ropes around it, but we used like garden hose. And it was just, it looks terrible when you look back at it. But back then, as a kid, you were like, "This is our this is our wrestling ring," and you just done weird stuff that I wouldn't do nowadays. <laughs> Oh, definitely, man. I mean, we look back on some of it the other day and we're like, what were we thinking, you know? But at the time, it was fun. We all loved wrestling. And when you're that age, you want nothing more but to, you know, to be a wrestler and to have that, that sort of ring in the back garden. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was cool. Yeah, man, definitely. I remember just the, the weird, like, you used to try and cut promos and all that kind of stuff. And you were like, yeah. stay. I mean, all the stuff that people were doing at that age, and I was just kind of standing there, a living year old, trying to cut promos and stuff like that, the like 10, 11. <laughs> but, uh, like, you, I found a wrestling school. My mum was like, you can't, you can't be jumping around, like, in a trampoline. She didn't want me to do wrestling at all, so I lied. I was like, oh, I'm going to just try it, and I'll never yeah. go. But I said I was working in a shop, and I just continuously went. But, um, I, it was fun, more fun learning how to wrestle than what it was putting up the trampoline and just being like, oh, you know what? We're going to try and choke slam each other and stuff like that, yeah. which was <laughs> definitely man. Wasn't he safe? And I always say to people that are like eighteen that have had on this that didn't experience they don't try this at home. Little thing that was on like yeah. DVDs. Yeah, yeah. It should have just said try this at home because that's all everybody done. <laughs> yeah, it's essentially reverse psychology, isn't it? You say don't try it, so what do we do? We go and build a wrestling ring and try it <laughs> on the sun. <laughs> that's it worked. But uh, yeah. <laughs> what was your kind of first experience turning up to? to a wrestling kind of class did you were you nervous were you like what's going to happen here because you still have that like I know it's a bit of a work but how is it a, how is it a work because I remember turning up with a 12 year old in the middle of nowhere in Linwood and being like I don't know what's going to go in and I walked in to this wee garage and it was just further these tall guys that are much taller than me at 12 obviously and I was like this is very scary but uh, what was your kind of first experience yeah that probably sums up well man it's, it's scary I mean you, you don't really know what to what to expect and I think probably a, a common misconception with with guys that maybe start out or, or come along for the first time and I thought that the same thing you know you, you you think you're going to go in and you're going to do all these cool moves 
and do all these cool sequences. Um, but in reality, um, it's far from the truth. You know, you've got to go in and, and nail down your basics and your fundamentals first. Uh, for me, I was I was really, really nervous. Um, I was out of my comfort zone. Um, I, I'm not ashamed to admit it. For the first probably year or so, um, I really, really struggled, uh, both mentally and, and, and I guess physically as well. It's probably one of the hardest sort of fitness types of regimes that I've ever followed or, or had to get in. Um so yeah, I was kind of shocked, taken aback. It was it was different to what I thought it would be, um, and yeah, there was times where I, I kind of thought, "Is this for me?" Um, because I, I didn't enjoy it at first. I thought it was very hard. Um, I wasn't settling in. I didn't really know anyone. Um, I, I'd said it on another interview before, but there was times where I, I kind of turned up and and sat outside and, and, and didn't actually go into the training session because I was so far out of my comfort zone. I just, I, I, I couldn't handle it. So I would sit out there, I would see every, all the other students go in and I would just drive home. Um, and, and that happened for a few months. Um, and it took me a very, very long time to, to actually get into the groove as such and, and start to enjoy it. Um, and, and, and yeah, and again, it's probably another misconception, but, um, it's hard. It's very, very hard. Even the basics and the fundamentals that you need to drill down, uh, it's, a, it's a huge, huge challenge. So that's probably the first thing that sticks out in my memory. It was hard, but um, you know what? I'm so glad that I, I stuck to it and persevered because um, obviously I wouldn't be I wouldn't be speaking to you right now if I had <laughs> if I'd given up. So, yeah, De- definitely, man. I think it's like anything in life, isn't it? You're going to need to push those comfort zones to get to where you've where you really want to be because if it's it's easy just to kind of sit there and be like oh I'll just get the just do everything that everybody else is doing but when you try and do something a little bit different and wrestling is like you said it's a lot of fundamentals and the physical side of it is what people don't even realize like it's so much fitness I remember my first day it was just if you know what Linwood is it's like an industrial estate and like nothing else is there and the guy was just like run around this industrial estate so we were just running Everybody gave up and went home. People were being sick, and I was just running. Like I was just, and he was like, "I totally forgot you were out here, man. I'm sorry, I thought you left." Uh, and I was like, "Yeah, thanks." So, and then he was like, "Come on in. We'll, we'll we'll start actual training." He's like, "I just I like to weed out the weak people," and that was it. I never like I hated going as well. Like you say, it's that like you turn up. I was the youngest guy there. I was like twelve, so I was like <laughs> nobody wanted to talk to a twelve year old, obviously, because conversation isn't that. Yeah, going to, sure. going to be flowing, you know, people are 18, 25, I'm 12, like, I, I don't know what they're going through, but that's all I'd done every single week, every day, I was at the gym, training, that was it, that was my yeah. main focus. Natural process as well, like, you hear that term, sort of, you know, weeding out, um, you know, whatever it might might be, that term gets thrown about quite a lot, but I think it's probably a bit of a natural process, and it, it's probably not even by design, but because the the, the, the the learnings and the, the work is so hard, people who, that's when you find out when, you know, if you want to be a wrestler, you make it through that phase. And and that's that probably just happens naturally um, because it, it makes you realise, you know, I've got to put in a lot of work here. And this probably isn't for me. And then that's when you see that split in the road, you know, when people maybe don't, want to pursue it and then you get the other half who want to and obviously put in that work and that's no disrespect to the guys that that that, that obviously choose that path I had a, a, a friend that was a, a close friend of mine who came and, and tried training um, and he was like you know what this isn't for me and I respect that um, because you're man enough to put your hands up and say look this isn't for me I've tried it um, but I'm not I'm not passionate about pursuing this um, as an actual performer you know and, and, and that's cool as well because it has that that impact on people and um, yeah everyone's different and, and we respect everyone's journeys you know uh, either way definitely man I just think it's one of those things that a lot of people go oh it's just that that fake the WWF fake wrestling and you're like oh I wait till you turn up and you get chopped or you get yeah. a close line and you don't move correctly it hurts as well like it's <laughs> yeah and I always tell everybody always goes oh it's that fake stuff so I ended up stop wrestling because I broke my neck and I'm like well I didn't do it because it was no move or anything. I tripped off the side of the ring. It was my fault completely. But, like, I've had more injuries from wrestling. Like, just be silly things. Like, I broke my finger one time. I tore my ligaments. Like, wee injuries. Just because, like, the way I've placed my feet or picking somebody up than what I did when i done, like, MMA and Muay Thai and stuff like that. And people are like, how is that possible? I'm like, because it's, like, 
timing is everything in wrestling. Like it's really timing how you move. If you're in with a bigger opponent, if you don't get their weight correctly, if they don't jump at the right time, you try and pick them up. It's like such a yeah. Um, Totally, man. And that's, like you said, that's why it's so important to drill down on these basics because, you know, when you're going in there with the guys, um, you know, you're essentially taking, you know, you're looking after them. Um, and, you know, if, if you mess something up, um, it can be catastrophic at times. You know, we've seen over the years so many people have had horrific injuries. So it's why it's so important to, to just nail down those basics and have those fundamentals. But you and I both know, even if you have that level of, of, of fundamentals, um, unfortunately, things can still go wrong and people can still get injured, and that's why it's such a high risk um, entertainment and sport business, you know. Definitely, man. So, how long have you been? How long have you been in the business? How long have you been out there participating? Um, so, I started training, I think, in two thousand and seventeen. Uh, I probably trained for about a year, and then I, um, yeah, I made my debut probably about a year afterwards. Kind of done some smaller shows. Um, through the sort of the, the east side of Scotland, like sort of, you know, participate in battle royals, gala shows and stuff, um, f- probably for a couple of years. And I, I wouldn't say I actually started wrestling properly until about, you know, maybe 18 months, two years ago, when, you know, I started to get involved in, in the sort of bigger per se shows, um, you know, like your ICW, your Discovery um, obviously done a lot of work at WrestleZone up in Aberdeen as well um, so yeah the last sort of 24 months for me have, have been really really sort of good in terms of I guess success rate and sort of taking it to the next level um, so yeah it's been it's been quite a, a journey probably about four maybe five years overall but as I said the last couple of years is, is when I'd say I properly started to to wrestle as such definitely man but how have you felt obviously just in the last couple of years, the past year and a bit, we've been obviously pandemic, everything had to close down. I know ICW has obviously still been doing their TV tapings and stuff like that, but how have you found, how have you kind of found dealing, being a wrestler, not really being able to get out there, especially that the start of the, the pandemic when we were like, no able to go to the gym or anything, how did you find it? Yeah, it's tough, man, and, and like everyone, um, obviously it was, it was really, really hard at first and I think, you know, as we got, as we went through it, we kind of we were able to adapt to it. But it was very difficult for a lot of guys because it's not just not being able to go out and wrestle. Um, it's about not having anything to post on social media because, you know, the way you got to look at it is um, you are a, a business, you're a brand. So you have to promote your brand. So you, to promote your brand, you need to rely on content. And 95% of the content comes from match graphics, um, promotional material, uh, match clips, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when you take all of that away, you're taking away 95% of the content available to you. So there's a challenge there, and you have to kind of think outside the box and think, you know, what else can I do to get out there? Because you know, you know, you're not going to be wrestling for the next however many months. Um, so yeah, it's hard. And like you touched on, obviously, probably the second half of the year, ICW were able to start filming again, obviously in a controlled environment, um, in a safe manner um with covid restrictions etc so um obviously i I realized how lucky i was to to be able to do that and obviously we're we're still doing that at the moment as we kind of ease back into a normal uh sort of uh programming if you like um but yeah and that that probably helped along the way as well but again i i I understand how lucky i am because there's a lot of guys that are not able to 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 wrestle at the moment and they're all kind of just waiting on that first show back and um yeah you know me too i can't wait for the first show back i know it's going to be absolutely wild when we get you know that first crowd back through the door and it's going to be electric and um yeah i'm I'm just so excited for everyone uh, and i really really can't wait for it yeah man i think it's i think icw's done really good during the pandemic stage obviously with the wwe network stuff but guys from that stay like two minutes from me being able to be on there it's really cool we see these guys are getting the exposure they need because Scottish wrestling and wrestling across the rest of the world is always really good and a lot of people forget that it's not just America that's got the main wrestling stuff. Like You can have a great five-star wrestling match at ICW in the garage in Glasgow, do you know what I mean? Like It doesn't even just be Madison Square Garden, WWE, but it's opening that world up to them, which is really cool. And I think ICW needs to be commended for the fact that they're giving you guys TV time and also help you learn how to work cameras and stuff without obviously the added pressure of the crowd being there and try to learn it as well. 
Definitely, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a huge, huge bonus to be able to film this content. I mean, and probably not a lot of people know the, the sort of the scale that it's on. So the, the deal that we have with Peacock TV, so Peacock obviously is has taken over from the, the network in America. Uh, Peacock TV has about 33 million subscribers. Um, and the WB Network airs in about 800 million homes worldwide. So this ICW content that's made in Glasgow with all these local guys um, is available in all these homes worldwide, which is absolutely amazing. Um, you know, it's, it's a great platform to be on, and um, it's good for everyone involved, and it's great just to showcase, like you said, the guys that you know um, who have had that opportunity to, to work, and it gives them a real boost and a real chance to, to put their name out there as well, you know? Definitely, man. It gives just adds that little bit of mere excitement to already an exciting kind of Scottish company as well. Kind of right. adding it so we can, because imagine turning up to the garage or filming for the WWE Network. A Glasgow I, Glasgow crowd's obviously going to be a little bit more rowdy than what's recently yeah. when nobody's been there. <laughs> Especially the first show back after what fifteen months or whatever. It's going to be absolutely wild, and uh, yeah, I can't wait for it, man. It's going to be great. I know I can't. I can't wait to come to a show. But the worst thing I'm dreading is the. I've had so many of Scottish wrestlers on. I'm like, I'm going to go there, and the people are just going to pick me out in the crowd, which I'm happy to take. But I'm like, yeah. everybody doesn't need to make digs at me. I know I'm bald, but uh, <laughs> I'm like, I can't wait to just get back to like normal going to shows at the weekend, and especially I started this whole NWC show channel just at the kind of start of the the pandemic because my job kind of went away and I was in the house with my kids and I was like, I'm not going to be teaching them maths and English for six hours a day. I'm going to need to get something else to take my mind off this. Yeah. Because uh, I, I hated school when I was at it. So try, yeah. try to teach them to be like, yeah. sit down and learn this. I'm like, why? I don't know why. <laughs> you need to do it. Yeah, you need to. That's the thing. We were always kind of brought up to, um, you know, you, you got to do this and, and, you know, you have to do that. And, it's great, you know, It's when you look at it from a different angle, it's great to have those learnings, you know, at a young age and whatever, and it helps you sort of grow up as a person. Um, but you're right to the point you need to have something else in life as well, um, especially through this lockdown, you know, I think we've all kind of, we can all appreciate that we need something else to, to look forward to and to keep us going. And obviously for you, this podcast has been great. You, you've had 50 other guests on, which has been amazing. And for everyone else, it's about, you know, getting that content, watching wrestling that we all love and, and, and getting back to it. And yeah, it's good, man. I think wrestling gives you that release from everyday life as well, doesn't it? So it's good. Definitely, man. Especially just getting out of that school environment because I'm a business owner. I'm, everything I do in my life is away from that kind of structured system. So me, yeah. when I was teaching my kids and they're like, why do we need to be doing this between nine and three? I'm like, I don't know why you need to be doing it because they yeah. look at me and they're like, well, you don't do it. You're like, you're... You wake right. up at four in the morning and finish your work from nine and you do like wrestling content and that's you. And I'm like, that's different. I'm older. I, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I've paid my dues over the years in yeah. college and uni and stuff. Yeah. And so do you keep up with today's kind of modern product like WWE, AEW, or do you just kind of stick to the classics? For me, obviously I keep up with it for the channel. But apart from that, I'm normally, I like watching the kind of classical wrestling stuff. I still feel I pick up a ton learning from people like Bret Hart, Ric Flair, or Dusty Rhodes, but do you keep up with modern products or do you stick with your classic? A bit of both, to be honest, man. Um, I'm a huge WWE fan, so um, you know I'll watch everything as it comes out, so I'll catch up with Raw the next day, SmackDown, NXT, etc. But then kind of at weekends and stuff, if you know we're settling down on a, a Friday or a Saturday night um, and we, we want something to watch, then you know we'll go and maybe pick an old pay-per-view, or, um, you know, we'll maybe go and pick some of the, the, the Raws from, like, you know, uh, early 2000s and maybe just watch a, a few episodes. So it's a bit of everything. You know, I, I love the content, old and new. Um, it's exciting. And like you say, you can just pick up so much. And even when you don't have that kind of hat on or head on that you're, you're trying to pick stuff up and, and, and use it and utilise it, you can just enjoy it as a show. You know, it's important for me to, to just sit back and be able to enjoy it still as a fan because the moment I don't enjoy it as a fan, then and there's something wrong. I'm, I'm going to get worried, you know. So it's important to just be able to have that time just to sit down and, and just watch it and enjoy it and, and kind of lose yourself in it as well, you know. Definitely, man. A lot of people forget that as well. Like, So Raw was on last night. Obviously, it's on every Monday. I'm, I normally moan about Raw. I don't enjoy the creative decisions that the most of them are taking. 
the in ring work's insane. Like compared to when we were or when I was growing up in the attitude era, it's just it's two different classes of workers. I wouldn't say the creator was that good personally. It's no for me. They're not writing it for me. And mm. I don't don't really know who they're writing it for. It doesn't my kids don't like today's product, but they like the older kind of one. But I still love it. Like that's why I watch it. I, I put myself through watching three hours of it and might not enjoy it, but I love I just love wrestling. It's something that I love. That's it, man. And you know what? Even and I can I can totally agree with with your point of view. And and even um, you know if we if we take that point for example, whenever WrestleMania rolls around, or for example now SummerSlam, they've announced it on like a Saturday night in Las Vegas, going to be seventy thousand people in attendance. You and I are both going to watch that, or we're going to catch up with that. Regardless of what content's been put out on Monday Night Raw for the last six months, we are going to watch WrestleMania. We're going to watch SummerSlam because it's good, right? We can always kind of fall back to it and yeah, we might not enjoy some of the stuff and you know it happens from time to time. But at the end of the day, it's going to be what you and I have loved for years since we were grown up. So we'll always have that little kind of soft spot and always look to almost give it that another chance, you know, um, because it's WB man and, and we love it. It's wrestling. Definitely, man. That's just something I always keep saying to people as well. Is that when they go, why do you watch it if you if you're moaning about it? One, me moaning creates good content. And two, it's it's fun. Like I, I remember it being great. Like six, seven, eight million people watching on a weekly basis, and just enjoying every single thing they were doing. And I still hope that one day it'll get back to that. It's not maybe it won't get back to those heights, but there's a chance that it can get as good. Back. Sorry, sorry, man, I disappeared. I don't know what happened. All good, all good. <laughs> uh, aye, what's I saying? Wrestling, aye, there's a chance it can get back to being as good as what it was. Obviously, the in-ring works better. The creative just needs to work. But like you say, the minute WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Royal Rumble comes round, you're just a big kid again. You're like, you know what? I'm going yeah. to sit down and watch it because it's fun. It's still wrestling. If you And I always keep saying hey, guys that are younger that are in wrestling that are already hating watching the product I'm like maybe it's no for you like you can't just hate watching it and then when you go into it you don't really think you might not get it like if you don't love it yeah. don't do it that's what I always say about anything if you're not loving the gym take a break go do something different go do swimming go do something change it up <laughs> yeah exactly totally agree totally agree so positives and negatives what's something that you love about today's wrestling world community um, I think there's so much to love. Um, I just think because we've all kind of went through this, it's a really good question, by the way, it almost caught me off guard. Um, I think cause we're, as a community, because we've all went through this kind of phase together where there's not been anything, I think when shows come back on a regular basis, we're all going to be there for it. You know, there's going to be a huge level of support. And I think, you know, as colleagues, we're just going to, learn to cheer each other on because we all know what it's like to, to go without it um, at, you know at a higher level in terms of WWE um, you know I think it's it's, it's really great um, the, they're doing things different at the moment and, and they as a company learn to adapt as well um, you know through the, the PC era and obviously now we're, we're starting to get fans back over the next month or so um, and the takeaway is that um, you know no matter what we go through um everyday struggles and we all have struggles and, and, and down days we can always have this wrestling that we can just switch off for an hour or two, forget about everything else um, and just watch wrestling and I think over the last year or so that's that's what we've all kind of learned and, and yeah it's, it's good and I think as a community we're there for each other, when it all boils down to it we're all just fans at the end of the day and um, doesn't matter if, if, if you know I go out and, and, and do it and someone else um, watches from home or someone else goes and, and, and main events in a, somewhere else in a different country whatever it is when it comes down to it we're all fans and we all have that in common and, and yeah that's huge man that's massive definitely man I agree with that if you, everybody's just a fan about wrestling that's why that's why I used to do it because I wanted to be like the guys I would look up to on the, the TV it's probably why you do it like having people that look up to you or people seeing you in the ring just appreciating what you do it's the whole Everybody's a fan of me reviewing it or when I used to do it or just when I was a fan. It's just, everybody should just 
enjoy it, if that it's makes sense. Enough. But uh, yeah. what's something that you don't like about today's wrestling world? Obviously, don't upset Peacock and WWE and stuff like that, but what's uh, something that you don't like about it? Um, it's difficult, man, because I, I think when you're so passionate about something... Um, especially my mindset. I mean, I, I always kind of lean towards the positives. Um, if I ever kind of see a negative, and obviously if it's at a lower level in terms of like the work that I do with ICW and, and, and the content we put out, if there's ever something that I don't like per se, then I'll make that a goal to, to, to change that or to improve that. So there's, there's probably nothing that sticks out in terms of a, a negative. I think the only thing that, sometimes you know you'll see on social media um and, and maybe people forget and it's because they're passionate about the, the product they love is that there's not just one form of wrestling that you have to like um you know we see it all too often that um you know maybe fans of wb um don't appreciate AEW and, and vice versa you know if you like AEW, then you can't like anything else or if you like new japan you can't like wb or whatever it might be um, there's no written rule that says anything close to that. Um, you know, we all go and watch, I might go and watch Fast and Furious at the movie, at the cinema on a Saturday night, and then the next weekend I might go and watch, um, you know, a comedy. I don't need to not like that comedy because I like the action movie the week, the week before, you know? Um, so I think, yeah, sometimes you just need to take a step back and just realise that we can enjoy it. We don't have to constantly bash and hate on what someone else is doing or, you know, why, you know, why are they doing this? Is it to get that? Just watch it, man. Just enjoy it. Leave reality at the door, as they say in the cinema. Um, sit back, chill out, grab a snack and just watch it. Lose yourself in it and enjoy it, you know? I definitely get where you're coming from, man. For me, it would be a negative and positive is rolled into one. I feel wrestling's overexposed at the minute because of things like social media, YouTube, WWE Network, the Impact Wrestling stuff. It's just, there's so much of it that, like you say, I think that's what helps people become so negative about it, is there's so much to watch that you might watch WWE, AEW, Impact, NXT UK, NXT, New Japan, all within the same week. It's so many different styles. And then you're like, oh, this is, it doesn't make any sense. Like, it's too much going on. Yeah. Instead of from back when I was growing up in, like, the early 2000s, like, late 90s was... WWE and WCW. It was just <laughs> two companies really oh, yeah. that you could yeah. kind of get. And it was, you took, they were pretty much the same company and you just kind of took what you got because that was it. But yeah. Yeah. that's what that's my negative would be. It's obviously, I'm quite similar. I don't try and focus on the negatives. I'm happy that it's overexposed and everything's there because I get to make content on it and I get to enjoy watching wrestling pretty much every day. But I get how some people might get burnt out by wrestling a lot quicker because there is so much of it. So you've got WrestleMania, AEW's got double or nothing within a short period of stuff. WWE takes a normal little kind of dip break after Mania. And AEW's trying to still boost themselves so then people will be moaning about WWE taking a break, it like slowing down a little bit. And you're like, just just let it play out. Like it's wrestling's a long term game. I always say it's a couple of years. Let everything play out over the long term because that's how it works. <laughs> Definitely. Like I touched on earlier, man, I think you just need to learn to enjoy it sometimes, you know. Um, obviously, I've got a lot of friends that that watch AEW. I personally don't watch a lot of it, um, and that's that's nothing. It's not because I have anything against them. It's just um, you know I, I I don't watch it. There's nothing. There's nothing underlying. But if they think you know if they say look there was this amazing match or this amazing event, check it out. I'll go and watch it. Um, you know if I like it, cool. If I don't like it, I'm not going to go and tweet about it and say like oh this was so rubbish. Um, you know, but it is what it is. I just learned to enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, then that's okay as well. It's not we can't please everyone. We can't enjoy everyone. Just like you say, move on to the next one and uh, yeah, leave yourself in it. Definitely, man. I think a lot of people forget as well. Like it's it's not for everybody. Like it's they're no they're not trying to sell to everybody because you can't make everybody happy at the one time. Right. And a lot of people forget as well when people do like reviews, like myself on YouTube. If I don't like something, I always say like if I'm not liking this and I'm moaning about it, doesn't mean that you don't need to like it because. When people comment and they're like, oh, I thought this was good. And it's like, wrestling, you can like it, I can hate it. That's the whole point of wrestling. Fine, yeah, exactly. Which is, people forget, it's heels yeah. and faces, isn't it? Good guys, yeah. bad guys. Yeah. If, yeah. if I don't like good guys and you like good guys, that's the whole point of wrestling. That's the... <laughs> their own. 
So where do you see yourself in 10 years, man? Do you see yourself being up in that Drew McIntyre position? Because at, at your work level, I can definitely see that you've been up in the big companies like WWE, AEW, if they would take you after your statement about not watching them. <laughs> but uh, I could see you doing like NXT UK, stuff like that, because your work group puts me in mind a lot like what I used to do, yeah. like the, way, the way you wrestle. And it just, it just works. It's so easy to slip in anywhere in any company. Where do you see yourself being in 10 years? I'm not asking you to predict it, just where would yeah, you like no, to be? I mean, 10 years time uh, signed with, with WWE, for sure, man. Um, you know, that's that's the, the main goal right now. Um, you know, we, we look to, towards NXT UK, first of all. Um, and then, yeah, you know, take it from there. But I'm not naive to the fact that these things don't happen overnight. Um, it's all about hard work, commitment, desire, drive. You have to have that on a daily basis. Can't have it for a week and then switch off for two or vice versa. Um, and I, I know that's the only way that I'm going to get there is by just continuing to work hard, um, do the things that, that I don't want to do, that I'm not comfortable doing. Be great. Be as best as I can be. And um, yeah, I mean, if I just keep doing that and, and, and keep that that uh, hard working ethos um, in my everyday life, then you know, there's there's nothing stopping me. But in terms of the the goal, it's yeah, it's most definitely to to go and wrestle full time with WWE for sure. Definitely, I think that it would work. Obviously, you're saying that that's something that you really love. It's a big goal we have, and I always say that anybody who gets into wrestling that says they don't want to work there, it's just lying to yourself because it is like it's like saying you become an actor and you don't want to do like a Disney movie to get those royalty checks every single month, which are insane. <laughs> you're obviously going to want to take it, but like you were saying there, man, it is hard work and mindset. So for me, I'm a business owner. I've been through hard times in the past and I've kept, brought myself around to have multiple businesses. I'm in a good position in life, but it's people, I get up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, just depending what day of the week. 4 a.m.'s at the weekend, 3 a.m. sure on the week. <laughs> and I stay awake till 11 to do work so I can get stuff done. If I've got the day off, so my birthday's on Thursday when I turn 30. I know I'm becoming an old man, but... Uh, <laughs> So I'll get up at three and I'll finish my work for nine so I can spend the rest of the day with my fiance, pick my kids up from school and that kind of stuff. But people always go, How can you stay how can you work so long? And I like, Well, I love what I do. Like it's it's drive. Like to get I have insanely huge goals, but to get to those next goals, I need to work put in those twelve, fifteen hours and always say I would rather put twelve, fifteen hours in for myself than put that in for somebody else because that scares the the bejeebus out of me being told when you can go to the toilet and stuff like that still gives me the fear from when I used yeah, to work. <laughs> definitely. Now you've got to you've got to have you know the why. You know you need to know why you're doing it. Um, I don't enjoy getting up at five o'clock to go to the gym every morning. I don't. Um, it's fine when you get there and you get warmed up and you start moving weights and stuff and getting a sweat on, but I, I don't enjoy it. I do it because it's it's I I need to do it. You know I need to do that in order to. Uh, you know, to to look good in the ring and to move well in the ring and, and, and be safe in the ring and look after other people in the ring. So I need to do that. I need to have that level of hard work if I want to achieve my goals. Do I like it? No. But, um, you know, that's that's how passionate I am about achieving them. You know, you've got to do things that um, that other people aren't willing to do and that's how you separate yourself. Definitely, man. And getting up early in the morning is one of the best times to go to the gym because there's nobody there. Like, <laughs> you can... Yeah, sure, yeah. I love doing rowing machines and like the cycle machine and stuff like that. So when I do go to the gym, obviously, can I just take a canoe down to the Clyde in Glasgow and start like <laughs> canoeing up and down? Yeah. So I was like, I'll go to the gym um, and I just go in there. There's literally nobody there. Like, I'm there in and out before even the people come into their work, which is, I think, it's insane. Like I'm, like, I'm putting all this much time in for you guys to even come to your work. Obviously, that's kind of the way things are. But like you say, it's hard work, dedication. And nobody likes going to the gym at that time in the morning. It's no good. It's well, it is good. It's good when you're there. Like you said, you get you start picking up those weights, you get moving, you feel it. It feels good after it. It feels good. But when you first wake up, your brain's like just go to sleep, go back yeah. to sleep. Like you shouldn't be awake. For sure, yeah, that's the thing to do, you know. But um, yeah, you got to you got to keep that level of hard work, you know. Uh, remain humble as well. Um, and yeah, just enjoy the journey, you know. I always get any trouble from my fiance as well because she's like you work far too much like I'm one of those people that's just it's it's all I do like there's nothing I've got goals I need to achieve I want to make people proud so so all I really kind of do I try and I work as much as I can so between doing this podcast and my businesses and stuff like that it's just constant and it's just it's something that I love doing so she 
this Thursday is my first day off in three years. Well, I finish at nine in the morning. I still need to get some some work in. I can't take the yeah. whole day off. But it's the first time I'll have a consecutive twelve hours off for like in three years, which is a long time. Obviously, everybody always says that's far too much, but I you think it's that day off. Then, man, you got to enjoy that day off when it comes. Uh, well, <laughs> I've booked in for a pub. I've got like a good wee <laughs> restaurant. I'm going to. I'm, I'm making the most of those twelve hours off. But yeah. man, heading up for the end of the podcast, I know you've got to get going. And we've got three questions. Two that I sent you. And one that I never send anybody. Okay. So I like to watch people hum and haw at it because it's a one that gets people thinking. So the first one is, who's your favourite wrestler of all time? Uh, all time. Um, this is tough for me, right? Because I've got so many up here, and it, it's hard to narrow it down. But I'm going to go for Triple H because I think he is one of the greatest of all time, and he's done it consistently throughout a few periods of time as well. And for me personally, he at one point he was bottom of the pile um, and he could have walked off um, but you know his hard work and, and his ethics brought him back up to, to be champion of the world so for me uh, yeah Triple H Man, I, I, I've never heard anybody say Triple H before I love Triple H I think he's like you said it's hard work it's dedication it's what we were just speaking about the guy's been there for longer than he's been wrestling longer than I've been alive which is yeah. Yeah. Insane to think, and he's just put in that consistent hard work every single year, just to achieve his goals. And I think he's a, I think he's a great worker as well. Who would be your second one, just out of curiosity? Uh, uh, this is difficult, but this is probably, I guess, we'll go, we'll do do one that's probably more of this era. And this is a strange one. People always look at me weird when I say this, but John Cena, because he started off with. You know, absolutely nothing. He came in. He his hard work took him to the very, very top of the business. People say that he's overrated and he can't wrestle. I absolutely disagree. Uh, I don't mind people having that opinion. I can understand why. And um, but for me, he was able to perform at the top of the WWE consistently for you know ten, what eleven, twelve years even. Um, and you know, when you look back at all these main events and these matches, they were just amazing, man. They were so, so good. And, um, you know, he could take off as much time as he wants to do movies and stuff. He could come back tomorrow and I can guarantee he would have the match of his life. Um, absolute worker, man. So, yeah, he's up there for me as well. I agree with you, man. I think John Cena's a great worker. I've always liked him. I remember getting his CD back in the day, but back yeah. when, I was a, when I was a kid, obviously I was being that yeah. kind of, like, I don't like the kill guys. That's the normal mark kind of stuff that you do when you're a kid. But I got something signed from him one time and it turned out he was the first person that, that signature helped me get my first girlfriend. So, yeah, I mean, he's, he's always in my, my book as a good guy. <laughs> so, what's one of your favourite events of all all time? Everybody says WrestleMania 17. If you want to pick that, you can. Or if you want to go somewhere different. Um, no, I'm going to go for Royal Rumble 2000. Um, lovely, lovely event. So, that was the one, um, I think, make sure I've got my events right, with um, with Triple H and, um, and Mankind or Mick Foley. Uh, in the main event, the sort of hardcore match. Yeah, the the whole event is just great, obviously. Madison Square Garden, if I remember correctly. And that match, is, he mentioned, he speaks about that in his book quite a lot. Um, but yeah, just an amazing match, amazing spectacle. So for me, if there's like a go-to kind of pay-per-view, that's the one that I'm going to go and watch. Definitely, man. I love Royal Rumble 2000. When it's that Royal Rumble time of year, it's one that I always put on. And I love the build-up between that the and then the no the no way out, the hell in the cell between Triple H yeah. and Cactus Jack. That's uh, yeah. I love that build up between that and that, which is my totally probably my favourite time in wrestling. So man, the question that everybody hums and haws it, which hopefully you may have your answer straight away, who knows? I'll tell you mine after I've I've told you the question, obviously. Is if you can add yourself to or replace anybody in any match in history, what would it be? For me, I would replace Owen Hart only if I could wrestle as good as Owen Hart, because I would probably mess it up, against Bret Hart, SummerSlam 94, and that boy steel cage, just because I love that match. I think it's one of the best steel cage matches ever. But what would your one be? What a question, man. And I agree, your answer's a a very valid answer. Um, I would love to... um, Any really with Triple H, I would love to just get in there you know, probably one of the the, the events he done in the, in the cage um, with Undertaker, and obviously I would never ever want that match to be any different. I would never want to replace anything about that match because it was just so great. But to be in there, you know, with Triple H inside the uh, inside the Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania with Shawn Michaels as the the special guest ref, 
man, that would be amazing. It'd be one of those moments you just have to look around just forever and just take it in, you know. Um, that would be just unbelievable. But um, as I said, I would never want to replace that match because it's so, so good. But yeah, if I was like, if I was going to slot myself in there, then that would be the one. Definitely. Man. I think it would be something like that between Triple H and Taker, arguably at the peak of their careers, because obviously the history that they've got in the hell, hell in the Cell at Mania would just be yeah, man. insane. Especially just looking around, all those kind of cameras still going off back then yeah. when they still had the phone with a flash on it. But uh, I don't. Yeah. Kids are kids are probably listening to us. Like <laughs> these old guys don't know what. <laughs> what they <talk? laughs> My other day, I was talking about VHSs, and somebody was like, "Oh, what's a VHS?" And I was, oh, I'm so old, man. I don't really need yeah, to. But you know, that's when you know. <laughs> just put a warning if I see anything that you don't realise. Please just Google it because I'm yeah. too old to to try and explain it. Yeah. Man, for sure. thanks for being on the podcast. Where what's one match that you would recommend somebody to go check out of yourself? First, what's one match you'd be like? This is what you need to check out. Um, check out the the ICW Bard uh, event on the network, uh, Steel Cage with with DCT. Um, that was kind of a culmination of quite a few things, a lot of moving parts, obviously with the history between him and Coach Trip. Um, so yeah, check that out on the W Network or Peacock TV if you are watching in America. Um, and then yeah, everything you know since then, just give it a watch, and uh, I'm sure you won't be disappointed. And I could highly recommend everything that you've done. It's been, it's great I, watching it. I, I love watching it. I think you're one of the best wrestlers in Scotland. Everybody always says, I say that, everybody that comes on here, but I only speak to the guys that I really like watching because... They are, well, yeah. I, well, I see who I'm like, reach out to because I'm like, oh no, I'll reach out to this person and see what they're, if they'll come on. And then you end up coming on and I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't think you were going to come on. I feel yeah. so bad <laughs> saying I really like your work, but I mean, yeah. definitely people should rec- check your stuff out. Obviously, it's easy to get. It's on the network, which must be cool to see yourself in WWE. Austin and the same thing, just you there. <laughs> yeah, Dev, it's cool, man. It's cool. But thank you for that. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. And uh, yeah, I've enjoyed this one. No problem. And what I'll do is I'll end the recording here. I'll give you the after care information stuff. Thanks, man.